Hey friends, welcome to the 12th episode of the Sunday Knitting Society podcast. My name is Chelsea and I am a knitter in Oklahoma City. If you are new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. I uh, hope you guys had a good week. Uh, it's a weekend. It's a weekend right now. I hope you've had a good two weeks uh, since I uh, last podcasted. I've had, I had a very relaxing week, very stressful week. <laughs> It's been a mix. Um, I've gotten a lot of knitting time, which is great. I hope you did as well. Um, I've got a lot to talk about today. <laughs> so uh, get a cozy beverage, get comfy, get your knitting. Um, I'm like, I, I keep looking over here because I literally like have a mountain of like new projects and acquisitions and plans and whips and it's it's gonna probably be a longer one although I'm not good at predicting this stuff so it could be short who knows I could talk really fast or I could talk really long <laughs> um yeah so I actually don't have any FOs this week um I do I really put some work into a few of my whips and so I really made a dent in some of them um, some of them haven't been touched, <laughs> um, but, um, sorry, I'm saying I'm a lot. <laughs> uh, mm. <laughs> I, yeah, I have a lot of plans and I'll talk about these as I come to them, but I had a few like long-term knitting goals of things, new skills I wanted to learn. Um, <laughs> I promise I'll try to stop saying um. Uh, <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, I like my mug. I got this in France with my dad. I don't. I don't know if I told him what that means. He probably knows now. I almost just said um again. I have a lot of long-term <laughs> knitting goals that I wasn't going to give myself like a like a deadline for, but there were things that in the next few years I wanted to learn. And then just by chance, two of the patterns I really want to knit this year, and one of them I've already swatched for, have they require me to do this skill that I want to learn. So it's kind of funny that. Um, this year is probably going to be the year I learn those, which is exciting. So uh, let's talk about what I'm wearing. So this is the Aldous sweater by Isabel Kramer. Um, it is knit out of La Monacomo in, I think I looked it up, it's the 28M colorway. So it's just this lovely gray. This is a saddle shoulder, which I'd never done before. And she has you do these Latvian braids at the cuff. And also with the hem. And then you do this really cool, like, overlapping um, split hem, which is kind of cool. This is incredibly cozy. This is my third time wearing it this week. <laughs> I wore it over a dress a couple times this week. And then this is, I'm just wearing this next to skin. Uh, it is insanely comfortable. The ironic thing about this sweater, I can't ever remember what's front and back. And there's literally like a faux seam down the back. So it looks different. But half the time I wear it with that faux seam down the front, almost like the Weekender sweater. Um, but it is a, it gets starting to pill. You can kind of see that. Uh, I think I've, I looked it up. I started this sweater in February, 2021. So almost two years ago, I don't think I've ever depilled this sweater. And it's starting to look a little look a little rough. I probably need to depill it, but it's not bad. And it's an incredibly soft fiber. I don't know what kind of magic they do to this yarn, but it is cashmere soft, but definitely more durable, which is nice. Uh, I don't think I've ever even washed this sweater. <laughs> probably should do that. Sorry, I actually put on lip gloss and I just did that like I was wearing chapstick and panicked that I'd smeared it everywhere. So I like had to look in the mirror. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, ah, <laughs> mm. oh, sorry, I thought that owns. So this is, yes, this is my finished object. Not finished object, <laughs> this is what I'm wearing. Finished this two years ago. Let's get into my wits. So one of my goals that by the end of this month, I will be done with my half and half wrap. And this week, last week, the last two weeks, I just put in so much work on this thing to get it untangled. It's kind of at the like large and unwieldy stage. So this is where I am. <laughs> I have I think I've got like 70 stitches left or 70 rows left and I'm done and I love it. It has reached the blanket stage where as I'm knitting it, it's also functioning as a blanket, which is very nice. So I, I still think I can finish this by the end of the month. It, it does mean I'm going to have to put some work on it. I think where my markers are. So this is from here on is 50 stitches and then that's what I, so I like to I do that so I can I won't have to count them each time and it's kind of like oh I have 10 stitches or 10, ro 10 rows to do 10 rows five rows and my goal is to do five rows a day and that's where it's getting at the point where that's difficult because these rows are so long um they're all they're like a almost 200 stitches so far in a row. They're about to be there. But I am now on my second ball, which is exciting. And I actually found the leftover ball from this color. And I think I had only used about 30 grams from that, that skein. Oh gosh. <laughs> this yarn is like hooking around everything. So yeah, I'd only used 30 grams from that full skein. So I have this and then another 30 grams ish left. So that's exciting. Almost done. I already picked out my colors for my next one because you always have to have a next one. And let me go grab them real quick. So I'm going to go back to the linen quill and I'm going to use wheat flour and I think this is still water blue. I just think these two look really good together. And that's going to be my neutral. Because so far I have one that is honey pink and poppy red. And I love it. It's so comfortable. I use it all the time. It matches nothing in my, in my living room. And then, of course, I cast on that one with a neon yellow, green, whatever. Doesn't match anything either. So I was like, I need one. It actually looks good on my couch. So that's what this one's going to be. I think I'm going to start with this color since it's winter and it's darker and I'll, this will hopefully get me, I don't know. I, I don't, I like that people set like defined dates for when they want to finish each triangle. So like cast it on your birthday and have the first triangle done by X date that's important or whatever. And so there's part of me that's like, I'm going to cast this one on on my birthday, which is middle of February. I'm going to have it done by the summer solstice. But then I think, well, what if that's like, that might be way more time than I need. Like I might finish it sooner. Or I could finish it by Christmas. <laughs> Who knows? Um, these things too tend to kind of, once I start them, if there's, there's always a phase with a half and half triangle wrap for me where I get so bored I don't care to finish it and it just goes in a basket and it sits there until one day I don't have anything to knit and it gets knit on and then I decide I like it again so I'm sure I'll go through a similar phase with this so that's why I have a hard time setting dates like I might be done by, with this one by the summer solstice or I might not we'll see um but I definitely want to get going on this before it gets too dark again because I don't enjoy knitting on really dark stuff in the winter. So I'll have to, I'll have to get a move on so that I'm, I finish this one while it's dark and I do this one while it's light. Maybe my goal can be to finish the entire thing by the summer solstice. We'll see.
No problem, sis. So that's the first whip. The second whip is a really fun one. And it's one that is well past due. But I started my niece's birthday sweater. And my friend um, Danielle commented on Instagram, I think, that she and her husband have a term for this color of pink. And it's spelled P-A-N-K, all caps, and you have to say it loudly. <laughs> and I, I, every time I look at this now, I want to go, PANK! <laughs> So this is her pink sweater. Uh, this is the No Frills Junior by Petite Knit. And it is killing me. It's so sweet. It's so tiny. I mean, she's a tiny little kid, but so, it's so tiny. I, I can't get over it every time I work on it. So I redid this collar like five times in one day. It was ticking me off. So the pattern tells you to cast on with this US two and a half. So that's what I did. And it was like, I think it opened to about that big for me. And I was like, no, she's um, almost five. Like her head is closer to my head than to a newborn's. And so I was like, there's absolutely no way that will fit on her head. So I think I went up to a US four cast it on again and it just it's still it's just it I was like there's no way that's gonna fit over her head and then there's this whole sweater and then she's gonna get it stuck on her head so I ripped it out and I pulled out a six a US six which is what you knit the body on and I cast on with a US six but three times I screwed that up I cast on the wrong number of stitches. I twisted my stitches. I knit an entire round with the tail. And at this point, it was kind of late at night. I think it was like 10 p.m., which is very late for me. And I was just getting angry. <laughs> so I was like, let's set it aside. We'll come back tomorrow. We'll fix the collar. So this is knit on a US 6. Um, and I actually, I even felt like this was too small. So I actually pulled out the uh, the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits, which I believe is a free pattern. And it is sized from like newborn to men's 6XL. So it's got a very wide range of sizes, which is delightful. And they use a thicker yarn than I'm using. And they use a size six needle for the ribbing and an eight for the body. And with the collar for the same size that I was looking for, they actually use a, the same number of stitches. So I figured, okay, I'm probably good if Tin Can Knit says this, this number of stitches on this needle size is going to fit my niece's age range and measurements, then we're probably good. And I do think, I think that's plenty wide for her head now. But um, you do a little bit of short row shaping, you do the raglan, separate for sleeves, and then you're off to the races. I will say, I find this bit very boring. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else experiences that with top down raglans. I love them. Don't get me wrong. But there's this thought in your head that like once you separate for sleeves, now you've got a smaller circumference and it's been take you, it's like a slog until you get to that. Like as you're increasing, you're just like, ah, oh, man, it's taking forever. And then you suddenly have a smaller number of stitches and you think it's going to fly now. And then it's just like, oh, <laughs> how many inches do I have to knit? <laughs> <laughs> just stocking it in the round. Kind of boring. But um, yeah, I've just been doing this while watching TV uh, or sitting outside listening to an audiobook. And I think I still need like four more inches on the body. Let me show you. Yeah, four more inches on the body and then I'll be good. And then the sleeves will fly. I say that, I said the body would fly. I think the sleeves actually will fly because they're like tiny, very few stitches and you decrease. So it'll be fine. I am using this really pretty stitch marker and I don't remember. I got it at Woolen Folk in a little set and I don't remember where I got it from. I got it with a little pouch, a little notions pouch. I love this set. They're so pretty. So that's my beginning of round. I also 
don't know if anybody else does this with top down raglans, but they tell you once you split for sleeves to make your beginning of round under the armpit. But my thinking is it's a top down raglan and stockinette. Who cares where my beginning of round is? <laughs> like it's not a pattern. If it was patterned, yes, I understand you put it there so you don't see the jog. There's, there's no pattern on this, so I'm not moving my beginning of round. I refuse. So almost done. My goal is to finish this this weekend because I have a three day weekend. There's not that much knitting. I just need to put on a good movie, sit outside, listen to an audiobook, and get this thing done. I am listening to a really good audiobook right now. I don't like serious books. Um, I just find life is stressful enough. I don't need my entertainment to stress me out as well. So I am listening to an audiobook by Richard Osmond, and it's um, a murder mystery series, but the the group that solves the mysteries is the Thursday Murder Club and they are a <clears throat> group of there's the four people who live in a nursing home and I have it's hilarious it's hilarious I highly recommend it I don't know how big the actual book is the audiobook the first one is like 10 hours long so it's a pretty decent book and it's kind of slow going at the beginning but it's funny and then it kind of ramps up and gets exciting at the end. And so I'm listening to the second one in that series, which is called The Man Who Died Twice. The first one is called The Thursday Murder Club. But it's, I think it's being made into a movie, which I'm all I'm here for. That just sounds amazing. But if you're looking for a lighthearted, funny book that's, you know, going to give you plenty of bang for your one audible credit, then I recommend this one. So yeah, I've been trying to sit outside to get my thousand hours, which I'm horribly behind on. But anyway, the other thing I learned to do this week, this week, last week, I don't remember, since last time, I learned to knit and walk. Y'all, it is so fun. It's so much easier than I thought it would be. Um, I was planning on like getting a hat because I was afraid if I used a sock and I had a tiny needle and tiny stitches that... I would drop stitches and so that yeah that was the plan but then one day I just kind of thought you know why don't I just try walking around my house and knitting and so I had a sock that I had just started and grabbed it and started walking and it's so easy it's so easy and people ask me a lot like how how do you not trip how do you not make sure you walk you make sure you don't walk into something and the way I think about it is when I'm knitting I'm either looking down at my knitting, seeing the ground under me, or I'm not looking at my knitting and I'm looking up like normal. And so um, I also made a point to walk on like sidewalks uh, and smooth surfaces. So I wasn't on, I think if I'd have been like on a trail or something, this would have been a lot harder, but I was on very sure footing. And so it, it was just walking. It wasn't anything crazy. So this is my sock. I love this. So this is a crazy zobber ball. I have no idea which one. The tag is gone. Uh, I have an idea because I accidentally bought the exact same colorway in the DK for my mom. <laughs> so I have it over there in my acquisitions. But look at all the pretty color transitions. I just love it. And I love that. It's hard to tell where your next stripe is. So you, it's kind of a mystery, honestly. Um, but it's really fun. I'm enjoying this a lot. So I just had my ball of yarn in this little canvas tote bag that I got from Rhinebeck. And I kind of pulled it so I could put it over my wrist. And then I just had it there and I was just knitting and walking. And every once in a while I'd have to tug some of the yarn out, but that was it. I made about, I think I've got about an inch of it just from like a 30 minute walk, which is pretty nice. Maybe not quite an inch, but I've got some done. I got a lot of funny looks. That was fun. Um, I walked on like, uh, was it a Saturday or like maybe it was a weekday. I don't even remember. I don't remember when it was, but it was a day when 
a lot of people seem to have off. Maybe it was New Year's. It might have been New Year's Day. Anyway, um, so I was walking around my, my neighborhood and there was a park nearby and I could see drivers as they drive by, they'd kind of look at me and they'd be like, <laughs> like what is she knitting? <laughs> yes, actually she is. So that was fun. I plan to keep doing that, especially when the weather gets a little warmer. We've had just a bizarre, unseasonable warm spell lately where we're like in the 60s. I think we even got up to the 70s, which is, I mean, it's January. Come on. That's not fair. Um, but we're supposed to get colder again in the next week. I think there's even in the 10 day forecast, there's a chance of snow. Fingers crossed. That'd be delightful. But yeah. So um, when it's that cold, it's a little hard to knit because your fingers get cold. But when it's in the 60s, it's delightful. So if we get some warmer weather, and once it starts to warm up a little bit in the spring, I'm probably going to make a big um, habit of that. So, and actually, my city is creating this enormous connected trail system which I'm very excited about. I think they said in total, it's gonna be like 52 miles of trail that's all connected like the entire city, which is really awesome. But it just so happens that part of the trail cuts through the park that's in my neighborhood. So I'm really excited about that. So I'll, I think I can like, from where the trail starts, I think I can actually walk to the Oklahoma City Zoo, which is pretty cool. <laughs> Um, I used to have a zoo pass to be able to go there because it's just, our Oklahoma City Zoo is really fun. Uh, if you're ever in Oklahoma City and you really like zoos, you should check it out. Uh, it's really pretty and I actually go more for walking because if it's not crazy hot and crazy crowded, it's an actually, it's a really pleasant walk and you can get quite a bit of walking in. Uh, sorry, this has nothing to do with knitting, but Maybe I'll bring my knitting and I'll, I'll knit and walk at the zoo and the animals can give me all kinds of funny looks. So I have one more, I almost spilled my tea. I have one more whip-ish, but it's not knitting yet. It's spinning. So I got a bag of fiber. I already threw the bag away. I have no idea what it, this colorway is. It's from Nest fibers. I don't think it's the newest one, so I don't think I'm spoiling anything. Actually, I know it's not the newest one because I have the newest one. So this, I'm, I shouldn't be spoiling anything, but look how pretty that is. I love this. So I don't know who I heard this trick from. I think it was Casey from Young Folk Knits. Shoot, now I don't know where my end is. Um, so she had her what she was doing was when she split her fiber. So what I did was I took the whole length of the fiber in the bag and I just split it uh, vertically. So I had two long strips and that's kind of my, my go-to right now. Oh, there, I don't know. But so then you have to remember which one you started at, what end you started at when to wind it all up. So I think it's tucked in there and I don't feel like unwinding it, but she would tie a little knot in the starting end. So that's what I did here. So I know which start, which end to start with for the next um, ply. So I finished my first ply and you know, is it the absolute best? No. Is it really good for me? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's quite even. I love the colors. I think this is one of the thinner plies I've been able to do and I'm really proud of myself for that. So. I, one of my goals for this weekend, aside from finishing my niece's sweater, is to do the other ply because I would really like to be able to twist, ply it up. I need to get that yarn and texture book. I feel like that might help me with terms. <laughs> Andrea Mowry talks about it a lot and it looks like it would be a really good resource. So I might, I might invest in that. We'll see. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I really hope this is focusing. I can't tell. It looks like it is. <laughs> Sorry if it's not. 
but I love this. It's just, it's so pretty and it's so soft. I think this is a Falkland Merino and it's just squishy and delightful. So maybe this weekend I'll finish the other ply and then I will ply them together. And I'll be sure to show you guys the final yarn. Not sure yet what I'm gonna do with it, but we'll find out. So that is all my whips. I still have the Louvre sweater. I brought it up here, but I don't think I've made any, any progress on it. Um, I'm just trying to finish that half and half in my niece's sweater. And I have plans. <laughs> I have a lot of plans. I, so I said at the beginning, I have, I've had two long-term knitting goals. And one of them I think I'm really going to enjoy. One of them I don't think I'm going to enjoy that much, but I think I'll enjoy the final product, if that makes any sense. Like the process, I don't think I'm going to love, but it might be worth it for the final product. We will see. So the first one is to steek. Um, I have steeked a swatch before. I don't remember why I did it. Uh, I don't even know if I still have it. But yeah, I steeked the swatch because I think I just felt like it. And I wanted to practice steaking. It's not actually that hard. Um, it actually, when I did a crocheted reinforcement and I will say that it actually made a lot of sense when I was doing it. So that's encouraging. So I, I felt like, okay, steaking is probably not that hard. It's just very different. And there is some technique that you do kind of, you need to know. You can't just like willy nilly cut through things, especially if it's super wash. So I hadn't done it yet. I thought about doing like an all over color work, Shetland wool, kind of scratchy, sticky wool thing and sticking it. Uh, but I just, that seemed like a lot of work. <laughs> I just wasn't really, uh, I was having a hard time motivating myself to do that. But then Andrew Mowry comes out with the shift again and it's steeped. And I want to knit it so bad, so I'm going to. And I, she actually recommends either, she actually recommended, I think, doing a sewn reinforcement. I do have a sewing machine, I think, unless my mom borrowed it. Uh, I have a sewing machine. I'm not real skilled at it. I can do it, but I'm not great at it. So I will probably practice sewing my swatch to make sure I don't like destroy my knitting trying to use the sewing machine because yeah, that would break my heart. But I did swatch for it. I, I have a, a very decent stash of spin cycle dyed in the wool because when I was planning my Alpen glow, I bought a lot of spin cycle and I think I talked about it on here. So I do my, my best thinking and my best shopping either right before bed or first thing in the morning when I wake up. And one night before I'd gone to bed, I thought, cause I was having a hard time finding my contrast color for the Alpen Glow. And my problem was that all the colors I was picking, I felt like were too dark for the Alpen Glow. And so this is one of those times where it wasn't my best thinking. It was probably my best shopping, but not a lot of good thought went into it. And I bought a whole bunch of Nocturne which is beautiful and dark. <laughs> so I had, oh, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <coughs> ten skeins of Nocturne that I didn't know what I was going to do with. And I happened to have a few contrast colors. Uh, a few. Yeah, I, I have, a, I buy this yarn obsessively with no plans behind it. So I have, everything I need really to make this sweater. Uh, I did buy more because I can't help myself. Uh, I had a thought at one point of making Ghost Ranch my main color. And so I bought some more of this. It's on its way. It's not here yet. And then I thought, no, that's too much, too much going on to have such a colorful and like this color is just, I love it but it, 
It's so unpredictable. I feel like this one of all their colors changes so much from skein to skein. And so I just felt like this is going to be too much change for my main color. So I bought more, but it's not here yet. And I'm not going to use it for this sweater. So I'll use it for something else. But uh, let's see if I can get these out without creating an absolute avalanche. So I have four skeins of this one, which is called All Nighter. And it's kind of like an emerald green and a like muted grayish purple. So that's that. I have four skeins of that. This one is my favorite of the Nocturnes. This is called Moonshine. And it's just like blues and grays and purples. And oh, it's so pretty. So I think I have three of this one. And then the last one is Flashback. I think, yeah, Flashback. And this one's more of a grainy, scummy gold and blue color. But I think I'm actually going to use all three. Let me get these situated. I haven't decided if I'm going to color block them or if I'm going to alternate them. But I just thought it'd be fun to have a little bit of a color change here. Uh, a little bit of a color change in the background, but not like huge in your face color changes. So these are going to be my my main color. I do have a skein of Witching Hour in the Nocturne. I feel like this, honestly, I feel like this is the darker version of Ghost Ranch. I don't know if anybody else sees it, but I do. Yeah, I just, I love that. It's kind of coming untangled or un unwound, but I see those very similar, similarly. But anyway, so I probably won't use Witching Hour. I did buy, I bought a couple more on their website along with the Ghost Ranch. And I forget the name of it, but it was another like dark, moody, um, kind of, I think it'll fit with these. So I may kind of use four. And I haven't decided if I want to pick them randomly or like put them in a pattern or again color block them because I kind of I think it'll depend on what my contrast color is in that section so we'll see I haven't made up my mind on that so that's going to be my my main color for my contrast color the contrast color I have a few options and I think I'm going to go with more of like a light paler pinky yellow purple or pinky yellow greeny color so this is the first one this is bellicor so i bought this to use on my alpen glow and then didn't use it um that's so pretty that's so pretty and i love this pink on the outside like that pink with the orange i think is so pretty um so that's bellicor and then i had i got three skeins of the the Belle YS color for La Mercerie, and it's called Pale September. So I think these would go well. So this is definitely not as in your face. It's a lot more pale pinks. There, it, there are some like dark oranges in here, which will, I think will transition well from this. But there's not really any strong colors in this, which I kind of like. And then I went ahead and bought a few others. <laughs> To give myself options so i did buy some from uh saundered yarn their new one sunday morning uh which is i think it's more of like a pinky medium green um yellow oh, sorry i don't know if you guys heard that i have my window open because it's just so nice outside and it's a little windy here today so sorry if that bothered you but yeah so i got the saundered yarn color <clears throat> I also bought from Spin Cycle, I got Big Sky, which is like a, another pastel-y kind of colors. And then I got one that is a cross between Midsummer and Verba Volant. I think I'm remembering that right. And so that one's a lot, it's a stronger color. So I thought it might be good to have like Bellicor is a little bit stronger. That one will be a little stronger and then I'll have like pale September and like this one you can tell is a little more pinky. I don't know if that's actually showing true to color. 
Um, but this one you can see is not as yellowy orange. It's a lot more pale. Um, so we'll just kind of see what looks best. But that's my, my potential colors. I did go ahead and swatch for this last night and I love it. <laughs> so I don't like these colors. Um, this, I, maybe that's a bad sign that I don't like these colors, but so I used a wound up skein of all nighter and this is a very purple section of it and there's no color change cause it's such a small swatch. Um, and then I used Velocore and I used a really yellowy orange one in here. So that may mean that Velocore doesn't make it into my sweater. I still think it would look good on me. It's just, I wouldn't mind like a stripe of this in the sweater, but I think if I had this the whole sweater, I would not like it. But I love spin cycle. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And I did not reinforce this before I cut it. And I've been like tugging on it and messing with it and it has not come undone. So that's encouraging. But I made this last night. I did wet block it. It's already dry, which is great. And it, I am, so she does 28 stitches per inch. I came out at 24. So I am a full stitch bigger than her gauge. So I'm actually going to go down two sizes from what I would normally pick. And that's exciting. <laughs> it's less knitting. Um, I will knit mine longer than her, I think. I think she actually did. She said it was a little long for her, from her normal. Um, but I do like, I do like my sweaters a little. I don't like crop sweaters for me. I just don't, I feel like I end up tugging on them the whole time. Oh, gosh. I almost did just unravel that. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I love the fabric that dyed in the wool gives you. It's just, it's not the softest yarn out there. Like it's not soft like this, but it is soft. And it is, it's got like a squish factor. It like bounces back. And with my Alpen Go, Alpen Glow, I think I wore that thing for like a week. I wore it at the airport on the way I'm home from Rhinebeck. And it was the coziest sweater. <laughs> I think I did get a little overheated because, uh, you know, airports, but, um, I don't know. I feel like airports, you either freeze or you roast. And so I did a little bit of both in that sweater, but this will probably be a very soon cast on. I think my, my yarn will all be here next week that I bought. So I think I'll, I'll probably open up the skeins and like look at them and try to get a better sense of what they're going to look like in the sweater because I feel like I'm really bad at seeing how spin cycle is going to turn out but I'm just going to go with it I might slightly micromanage the sleeves but I might not we'll just kind of see uh I'll, I'll go where the spirit leads me on that one but um <laughs> I think what it, when I say micromanage I'm not cutting the yarn I am not going to I'm not going to be that Mangy, but I think what I did with my Alpen Glow is I knit a couple rows, cut the yarn, went to the other sleeve, did a couple rows, and just kind of went back like that. I don't know. So this is stranded, so I don't know if I'll do that. I probably won't. I'll probably just knit it and be happy with the result. Or be unhappy with the result. But that's the fun of, of Spin Cycle, honestly, is that it's just, it's a gamble to some extent. And Thankfully, they make such beautiful colors that it should still be fun, but it'll be a journey of discovery. That's that. Now, the next one I'm going to swatch for, I'm going to swatch for this today, and I'm, I'm excited about this. This is very out of normal, or out of the normal, out of the usual for me, but I am looking forward to it. I am going to knit a Lento. I'm going to do the Let's Lento Cow with uh, Crayabea podcast of Rebecca and Amy Palco and I'm going to knit the entire thing if, it, if the swatch works out I'm going to knit the entire thing in double stranded alpaca sorry alpaca so let's go through my colors see if I can remember these so the first five are all Frankie gray fibers so this one is steel blue like oh that's a little it's, it is showing up a little bit 
lighter. It's a little darker. It's more of like a denim-y. That's a little bit more. Oh, guys, it's so pretty and so soft. I don't find any itch from this. Whereas I do with mohair. This is just fluffy softness. So that's steel blue. This is moss. No, this is sage leaf. And that is actually what it looks like. Put my head out of the way. So those two. This is moss. Ooh. Moss got trapped in his unraveling. Oh dears. <laughs> Get you back in there. Okay. So this is moss. So I think what I'm gonna do is these are gonna be my first three in the stripe. So it's gonna be striped. Then the next one, I haven't quite decided on my color order. This one is not, this is uh, not Frankie Gray. This is Farmer Daughter Fibers Odang, and this is Teresa. So this is the one I bought. I don't know if I want it that. I might, I'm going to mess around with the color order. This is Frankie Gray and Pinch Me. Let's see if I can do this. I have one more. <laughs> okay. And then this is Pavement from Frankie Gray. Oh, but you can't see them all. <laughs> Maybe if I do it like... <laughs> Oh gosh, I tried. Okay, well, that's the order I'm <laughs> doing them in. Um, these are so beautiful. But I also, okay, let's see if I can get these in a semblance of an order again. Jeez, oh, I'm gonna be covered in fuzz after this. I think I actually like these two together better. Why am I trying this again? It failed last time. Okay, well, okay, you've seen the colors. I don't feel like trying to stack these again. Oh, jeez Louise. Yep, covered in fuzz. Cool. So I actually found in my stash, just rummaging through it, I had a little nugget of Farmer Daughter Fiber Odang. I don't remember what this colorway is. I'm sure somebody knows. But it says lovely mustard, and I actually really do like it with the others. I don't have enough to do the same amount, but I might like do like a random stripe in there somewhere, just like one or two browns with this color. So that's my lento. So I'm going to swatch for that today. Oh, jeez. My black tights are just covered in pastel fuzz. Um, yeah, so that's, I'm going to swatch for that today. I'm going to wet block it just to make sure I like the fabric. Um, the lento is at a pretty loose gauge. And so I'm hoping that those fibers will just bloom and fill in the hole so it won't look like I'm wearing a sheer sweater. Um, Cause I, I don't want that. Uh, if it does, I'm not going to buy skeins to match all those colors. I think that just makes it a, uh, a, I would have way too much yarn. I'd, I'd be able to knit two lintos with that. And um, that's just a lot more money. And I don't really want to spend more money on this. So I will maybe try to find a color that kind of blends well with all of them and knit that along with the double stranded. Uh, sorry. So we'll see. I'm, I think it'll work if I double strand it, but it is knit on a US 10. <laughs> and so. That, that is going to be a pretty loose gauge. I may end up having to hold something with it. And if I do, I do. Um, but hopefully I won't because I really like those colors and I want them to come through as is. I don't want to change the color with um, another yarn. So it'd be great if they could make, you know, like they make clear thread. It'd be great if they could make like see-through yarn. Or clear yarn. <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. Uh, it probably doesn't because if it was see-through, it wouldn't do anything for the sheerness. I was just thinking if you could get like some kind of filler in there, <laughs> it just increases the volume without increasing or changing the color. Aye, aye, aye. Okay. So the second skill I really wanted to learn in the next few years that I'm planning to learn this year 
is brioche. And sorry, it says, uh, I don't, I don't think I'm going to love brioche because I don't love ribbing. I can do it. It's not my favorite. And this is like complicated ribbing. <laughs> so I, I like patterns where it's just a knit and a purl or it's just, you know, basic knitting. So this is one that is definitely going to take some brain power to do, but I'm going to do it. So Petite Knit came out with her Annette sweater or cardigan. I, I don't know if it's Annette or there's a G in there. So I think it's Annette. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. But she came out with this gorgeous cardigan and it is, it's like a V-neck cardigan. I'll see if I can get a picture and put it up here. Um, so it's a V-neck cardigan um, in brioche stitch and she knits it on tiny needles. So, and she even said in one of her, her posts about it, that this is not a quick knit. This is a slow methodical, like kind of grounding knit almost in a way that like, you cannot rush this. You just have to accept that it's going to take you a long time and be okay with that. <laughs> so I kind of like that, that mindset. So, I, I really want to knit that, but what I find in other petite knit patterns is she does not necessarily hold your hand. So there's not a ton of instruction. It's kind of just expected that you're going to know this, um, or have some basic knitting knowledge. And so I'm a little nervous with doing my first brioche project in such a tiny gauge in such a long-term project. So I actually decided to knit Andrea Mowry's Harlow hat and it's in two colors. I did buy yarn for it, but it's not here yet. So I'm going to knit mine in the Landon Kid Todd Worsted. So I'm going to do the Worsted Harlow hat. Sorry, it just hit me that she, Andrea Mowry has two patterns for the Harlow hat. She's got the regular Harlow and she's got the Harlow Worsted and I'm pretty sure I bought the regular. <laughs> I don't think I was paying attention. I think I bought the wrong one. Oh, well, it's fine. I'll buy the worst of one if I didn't. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do that. Um, so I'll show that yarn when it gets here. So I think I'm going to do that so that I can learn brioche. And then once I feel more confident in how you do the brioche stitch, then I'll start working on this Anyette cardigan. But I absolutely adored the colors that she picked for her red cardigan. And I, I just had to have the same colors. Um, I kind of toyed around with like buying one of the colors because one of the colors was quite easy for me to get. Ooh, easy. It was easier for me to get. And the other color was slightly different, more difficult for me to get. And so I thought, okay, I'll get the one that's a little easier and then I'll just find the other yarn in a different, like I'll buy it from a different manufacturer. I'll just get a different yarn. I could not find it. I could not find anything like it. So I ended up buying exactly the yarns that she uses. I apologize. I'm probably going to mispronounce both of these. Maybe not. So the first one I got was the Isayer and it's the Finny. It's one of their like OG bases, apparently. Um, it is a two ply and this colorway, oh, they don't have the, it's called Tart Cherry. And that, oh my gosh, this is, I feel like this is a good red for me, my very pale skin. Um, it's actually, it, it's rustic. This is not like, this has got some bite to it, um, but it is thin. And so, um, and I'm going to knit it with mohair so that will soften it up. But I can't get over this color. <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, when I was kind of in the back and forth, like, am I gonna do this cardigan? Am I not? Do I just want the colors and all that? Like, uh, no frills with that. I actually, uh, so this has a lot of yardage on it. So this is 510 meters and 100 grams. So it is kind of a lace weight uh, or a very thin fingering. So I figured, okay, if I get, if I hold this double and I get four of them, maybe I could do a lento. And so that's actually what I did originally is I bought four of these, um, thinking I would hold them double and make something else. So got that. 
And then I just thought, don't chicken out, do the thing. Knit the cardigan, you can do it. And it turns out this is what I needed anyway for the cardigan because it is knit at such a fine gauge and it is, I'm gonna, I am mean, it'll be a little bit oversized. So then I started searching for a mohair that would work and I, I spent a lot of time searching online and I really couldn't find a red that was similar. And part of my concern too, is I didn't want to buy something that looked similar on my computer screen. And I spent all this money on mohair and then it arrived and it didn't look anything like it. So I was really cautious. Like it had to really look like this yarn or I wasn't even going to try. So I finally gave up. <laughs> and decided to get the exact same mohair that she got. I am very sorry, I'm going to mispronounce this brand, Sislerget, uh, Sislerget. So this is a Danish uh, indie dyer, I believe. Um, and this is a silk mohair, and I think she calls this wild poppy. And so this is 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. It's 50 grams, it's 420 meters. Um, I don't think I actually needed as many skeins as I thought, but I think I bought an extra one just to be safe. So I got five of these. So these go so well together. Oh, uh, and I think Petite Knit said that this one was actually dyed specifically to match this so that she could make this sweater. And I am very impressed with this company. Um, they listed this as a pre-order, and so I bought it as a pre-order. It, it's pricey, but it wasn't the most expensive mohair I've ever bought. And actually, shipping wasn't that bad, considering it's coming from Denmark. Um, I think they used DHL, which DHL is the best. Hands down, no competition. They delivered this from Denmark in four days. <laughs> four. <laughs> that blows my mind. Um, like, uh, if, if FedEx or UPS, if they'll say like estimated delivery date is this date and it's coming from another country, I automatically add at least two days to that because I figure it'll get stuck in customs for a couple days. I don't know what magic DLO, DLO, that's a lab in Oklahoma. <laughs> I don't know what magic DHL does, but nothing ever gets stuck in customs. It's fantastic. So I bought this as a pre-order thinking it's going to take me a month to get this and two weeks later it shows up. That's awesome. So I'm not, this isn't going to start immediately because I want to learn to brioche first. Once I feel comfortable with brioche, I'm going to start this and I'm very excited. I'm hoping to have this thing done by next fall. So once it starts getting cool, I'll have this beautiful, beautiful red cardigan. that's going to be squishy and delightful. So that is all of my immediate plans. Uh, yeah, that's all my plans. Um, the rest are just acquisitions. Um, and I bought, I bought quite a few. So let's get in to that. So the first, I made a um, purchase from Pearl Soho uh, a few weeks ago. I don't remember exactly when. So my mom has gotten into knitting, which is very exciting. And so I find myself now, if there's a sale like with Pearl Soho or with another shop, I automatically think like, oh, I should buy this for my mom. And so if I'm gonna buy her stuff, I'm gonna buy my, me, ugh, me my, ugh, myself. <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. If I'm gonna buy her stuff, I'm buying myself stuff. So I got her some yarn from Pearl Soho and I decided to take that opportunity to try out their knitting yarn. Um, which I find kind of a funny name, if I'm honest, because all yarn is knitting yarn. Um, I don't know why I got these colors. i be honest. I think I found some of their colors a little bit, like, not my color. And, yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to do with these two. But I think this is either, I think this is worsted weight. It's merino wool. Mm -hmm. Does it say? Yeah, it's 100% merino. I don't know if it's super washed or not. It doesn't feel like it. Um, but I got heirloom white and hydro blue. 
All right, these are blowing out like crazy. I don't even know if you can see the label. <laughs> Sorry if you can't. Um, yeah, they're, they're soft. They're definitely soft. They're not super scratchy. They're not the softest yarn, but they're definitely not super scratchy. They just, they kind of, they're not exciting. Um, and I don't know if it's just the colors I chose that don't feel exciting. Maybe it's because I haven't started knitting with them that they don't feel exciting, but they just kind of don't. So, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. These will probably just hang out till I find something for them. So, I think that's the only unexciting yarn I bought. The other one I got is also very, this is very exciting. Um, so I bought my Isayer yarn from Wool and Company and they had a few brands I'd never tried before. So I just decided since I'm making that other order and I'm already paying shipping, let's just add a few more things on. So the thing that made me want to buy it was this. And here's what's annoying. It's showing up in my monitor as bright as it showed up when I bought it. And it's not this bright. <laughs> it was a little bit of a letdown because this thing like on the screen like glows. And in real life, it's still very bright, but it's not as bright. So this is Lang Alpaca Super Light. Uh, what is the content of it? Let's see if I can read this. It is 54% alpaca, 24% polyamide, polyamide or nylon, and then 22% wool. And it, how many meters is it? It's 199 meters. So it, I will say, I don't, it's very soft. It's very, very light. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to love this. It, it, I don't know. It all kind of looks like one big blob. Like you can't really distinguish any strands in there. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. But I bought it to go with this. So this is alpaca socks. Uh, <laughs> like saying it that way. So it's uh, 390 meters for 100 grams. It is 70% alpaca, 30% nylon or polyamide. I say both, um, but I figured I could make a hat with these. I probably have enough between these to make two hats. I don't know. Maybe not with 100. I only have 200 meters of this, so I don't know. But I might make. Um, the Parkview hat with this. I think that'd be pretty. Um, I just think this would be a fun color <laughs> to put on my head. We'll see. They're both really soft. Uh, I have to say this is incredibly soft. Uh, and these were not expensive. I don't think. I don't remember. I don't think they were expensive. I don't think I'd have bought them if they were super expensive. But that's what I got from there. And then Let's go to this one. Um, so when I was buying more Surrey alpaca to go with my Lento clump group, um, I bought a couple extra of the Odang. So I got, I couldn't remember if I like Teresa or Pretty Shield better. I couldn't remember which one was darker and it was a little hard to tell on my monitor. So I bought both. So this is Pretty Shield. I love this. I think it's so pretty. Um, and then I bought flower point because I was actually originally thinking maybe I could see if these two go together and I'm glad I didn't go with this option because this is definitely a like more yellow red than this this is more of a blue red this is yellow and I don't think I had to like the final product but I do think it's kind of funny that the three colors I got are all like in the same family <laughs> and so if I have extra of this I may try to make something with these two um, but I really, this stuff is aptly named. It is oh dang soft. It is, I should probably keep it away from my eye because I'm going to get fuzz in my eye. <laughs> but they're just, oh, they're so soft. I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but something. So that's that. We're, not, we're halfway done. Um, I don't remember why I bought these. <laughs> I think there was a sale, maybe, I don't know. Um, I've spent a lot of time on the Lamb and Kid website in the last week, and I blame Caddy Jacks for that. 
or I credit Cat and Jacks for that. Um, I guess just depending on how you look at it. So I love Caddy Jack, or I love Caddy Jacks. I do love them. Uh, I got to meet them at Woolen Folk, and that was lovely. But I also love Woolen, Woolen Kid, Lamb and Kid. Good night. Um, I love Lamb and Kid. I knit an entire sweater out of Lamb and Kid. It's delightful. Um, and I use Todd for my sweater. I know I like Todd. And so I just decided to buy some more. And I don't remember if I had a project in mind for this. I don't remember if there was a sale. I don't know why I bought these, but they're beautiful. And they're colors I haven't used before. So the first one is Space Cadet. Oh, that's showing so well. So it's like this super dark midnight blue. And I, I'm i gonna need a sweater in this at some point. This is just, oh, it's so pretty. So I got that and then I got Fern Gully. <laughs> So that's showing up lighter than it actually is. It's darker than that. Um, maybe I'm putting them together. Eh, this is still darker. Uh, it's not quite that light, but it is. It's definitely more of like a scummy green. Um, so this yarn is just so nice. I think maybe I'll make a striped hat with this. Maybe I can see what the weight of yarn for the original Harlow hat is. And if it's the right one, maybe I'll make a Harlow hat with this. This would be fun. Um, yeah, I, don't, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these. Um, all of the yarn I bought this week from Lamb and Keg was Todd Worsted. So um, they won't go with this, but I don't, I'm happy with this for now. Oh, it's so soft. So soft. <laughs> all righty. Three more <laughs> and then a little chat. Um, okay, I bought something. Ooh, I think I bought it a few weeks ago. It might have been, I think it was a pre order. I don't ever pay attention, and that kind of gets me sometimes because I buy stuff and then I forget I buy it, and then it shows up on my front, um, front door, and it's like, oh crap, when did I buy this? Um, so that's fun. Oh. <laughs> I just realized that these are different weights and that makes some sense okay wow Chelsea so I saw this color from Gage Dye Works a while back and I actually bought two skeins of it I have not used them yet but I think it is it's just one of those colors that I, it, it's just insanely beautiful to me um, it's so fun and so I'll try to, if I can find a picture of like the, what the, the yarn looks like knit up, I'll put it up here. Um, so I had, they had several different iterations of this pat or this colorway, not think of the word for that. So they have just like a, a sock yarn that they have enough to make a pair of socks. And then they have a shawl set and I did not read the instructions very carefully on that because they have two different shawls you can make. And so one of them is you can make it with a single skein of their shawl yarn. Or the one that I actually wanted to make, you needed two skeins, if I'm remembering right. Uh, and they're bigger skeins, they're 115 gram skeins, but you still, to make that bigger shawl, you need two of them. And I'd only bought one. And I guess I could, it's the same yarn as the sock yarn, so I guess I could have just used that in hindsight. But I wanted a pair of socks out of it. And then on this last update, they also had a worsted weight. And it's in the same colorway. And so I thought that would be really fun to make a hat or something with. So I bought, oh, that's blowing out like crazy. Uh, it's not that neon, but look how pretty it is. So pretty. It's such a fun stripe because I think it's, if I'm remembering the picture right, it's not like, all right, I have really bad reflex right now. I hope you didn't just hear that burp. Um, it's not like defined stripes. It's more of like a stripes meld into one another. And I think that's really fun. So I got that and I got the worsted. Um, if it tells you anything about me, when I opened these, I thought I'd just gotten two of the shawl set. <laughs> I hadn't even noticed that those are definitely different weights of yarn. So that's, that's sad. Um, but now I know. 
so that's fun. Um, so at some point, I will knit these. I don't have any immediate plans to knit them, but I'll do it at some point. So the last yarn purchase I made that has arrived uh, was because of how much I enjoyed my Zobber ball and just getting them all. They're like way over here. <laughs> so this purchase is working out well in my mother's favor because they accidentally sent me the wrong yarn and I don't feel like straightening it out. So she's getting some extra yarn. So you're welcome, mom. Um, and yeah, so I bought this from, ooh, I forget what the store was called. I'll have to, if I, I'll look up the name and put it down here somewhere. Um, so I, clearly wasn't paying that much attention when I bought it. So I thought I was getting all crazy. I didn't know there was a difference between crazy zobber ball and zobber ball. There is. Crazy zobber balls are marled. Marled. Zobber balls are not. So I bought this one, which is just a zobber ball. Still fun. Still love the colors. I will still knit this. But it's not a crazy zobber ball. But this is the number 2512. This is an F for two socks. I will definitely knit that. And then I bought two balls or two zobber ball, crazy zobber balls of the DK weight, which is called Stark Six. I am sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. But, um, and I don't remember now which ones I got for my mom, but I think they accidentally maybe got the same number, but the wrong weight because I definitely had ordered myself one crazy zobber ball and all of these the other three are all DK. So these might go to my mom. So this is the first one. And I think this is the same as the sock I'm knitting. It might be a little lighter. I feel like that is blowing out like crazy. It's definitely darker. Um, so these colors, I, th I think it is still lighter than the one I'm making. So this is thir 2334. And then the next one I guess, mom, you're gonna find out what these colors are now. So, surprise! <laughs> um, the next one is color 2231. So pretty. Ah, oh, it'd be gorgeous. And then the last one is dark, and it is 2248. So, and I just realized this. They actually tell you what it's gonna look like on the, the skein or the tag. That's kind of cool. Huh. Ooh, this is fun. Look at that one. So, mom, next time you come to my house, <laughs> you got three. Um, so, yeah, so my mom has started knitting a sock. I think she's on the cuff, so it's not a ton. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed that that's where she's going next because I tried doing a sock when I was brand new at knitting, and it was terrible. <laughs> I think I've showed a picture of it before, but, um, I was going to say, oh yeah. So one day I, I decided to like, it's like, okay, I'm going to, she's going to learn how to knit a sock. Great. I'm just going to write down like a diagram of how to do like a basic vanilla sock and just do my little pattern for that. So I like got a piece of paper, drew a sock and started writing for like instructions for the cuff. And then I got to the heel <laughs> and ran out of room on the paper trying to write out instructions for how to knit a heel. <laughs> and I was looking at it and I showed a friend at work and I was like, look at this, these instructions because it's like a little bit up here and just tons of like text at the bottom and it looked entirely overwhelming. So I was like, hmm, I should probably start this over. <laughs> so I did and I actually separated it out for the first set of instructions is just for the cuff. The second set is for the heel and then the last bit is for the foot and the toe. And describing Kitchener stitch, handwriting it out, how to do Kitchener stitch, is actually kind of difficult. I don't, I did not enjoy it. Um, partially because when I do Kitchener stitch, literally in my head, all I'm saying is right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right. And that's how I keep myself straight. So I'm like, I can't, that can't be my instructions for Kitchener stitch. I actually have to like say, like, Take the, the, or like insert the needle purl wise and remove 
loop and uh, remove stitch and all that. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, so I gave her my basic sock pattern and she is working on her, her cuff right now. Um, cuff in the leg. And so yeah, she's doing great. It's very exciting to have another knitter. Um, okay. So the last acquisitions are fiber. And I believe these are the more current ones. So, um, so I have Nest Fiber Club and Hello Yarn. And these are the December colorways. And I think they've already been spoiled on her Instagram. So I'm not really giving away. Sorry for the crinkling. I lost the little tie at the top. So it keeps trying to explode out the top. Um, I am really excited. This is probably the next one I'm going to do once I get done with this other spin. So this is Andromeda. So pretty. I really like, I'm sorry, I'm really trying not to crinkle this a ton. I love all these like cotton candy colors. They're so pretty. And this is a Targi. Um, so that will probably be my next, but, oh gosh, <laughs> that's the problem with having too much is they're all so far away. I also got my Hello Yarn for December, which is Rambouillet. And it's pastilles. Is it pastilles or pastillas? I guess it depends on what language it is. But look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. Like I love that you've got like this mustard and this like pale blue and then this like burgundy. And I'm really, oh, and you've got like a little bit of, where'd it go? Yeah, that, you got, it looks different in my screen. That looks like camel colored yeah, in real life. Like it's much darker. Um, I'm really like this little pistachio there. Really interested to see how this spins up. I think this could be, you could end up with some like really high contrast barber pulling, which isn't my favorite, but I guess it depends on what colors they are. Or I could manage to get this all in one section. I don't know. So that, those will probably be my next spins, um, which I'm very excited about. I think those will be fun. My goal of spinning four bags of fiber this year, or this year, <laughs> this month, it's not going to happen. Um, I enjoy spinning, but it is a very different craft for me. And it definitely, I don't enjoy it as much as knitting. Knitting is definitely my, my favorite, my preferred craft. And so, especially if I had like a stressful day at work or I'm just tired, when I get home, I'm probably just going to knit. Um, I also find it a little bit hard to see the fiber super well, just because of, um, my vision. And so if I don't have a lot of light, it's hard for me to really see what I'm doing. And so I find that daylight or like natural light actually works best. So I have been kind of saving my spinning for the weekends when I can be home in the middle of the day. Um, but so I'm, I'm, it's got a nice little burst of air. <laughs> um, so I might do some spinning this weekend, um, but I probably, until the, the daylight hours are longer, probably won't be doing a whole bunch during the week, which is fine. Um, but hopefully I'll get through two bags of fiber this month. I think I can at least do that and then have some more yarn to knit with. So, um, so yeah, just a little chat about the future. Um, I am going to, this weekend, I'm going to film a year in review or like recap of all the sweaters I knit in 2022. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I will, I'm going to film that this weekend and I will try to have it up by next weekend. Um, that's my goal. So you'll have a little bonus episode for next weekend. Um, but then my regular podcast will be back in two weeks. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's kind of funny. So I knit nine sweaters in 2022 and it was funny looking through them because the first four, I don't love like the fits weird or there's just, some, or the finishing is not my favorite or the shape is not my favorite. Um, but the final five are some of my favorite sweaters of all time. So that's kind of interesting how that worked out. So hopefully going forward, I'll continue to make sweaters that I really like. Um, but so going forward, I will probably have far less 
acquisitions every week. Um, I kind of had an epiphany <laughs> this week, uh, or a, uh, yeah, epiphany kind of fits. Um, so I have a ton of student loan debt and I've been paying it off for quite a while and I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of having it. And I have been making regular payments on it, but I really haven't been making as much of a payment as I could. And so it's just dragged out. And every time I kind of rehash, like, okay, if I pay this much every month, how long is it going to take me? And it's like, ugh, forever. It's not actually forever. It just feels like such a long time to be paying off these loans. And it's very discouraging. And so I find that I don't try very hard because <laughs> it's like, well, I'm going to have this forever anyway. Why am I going to spend more money on it every month? Um, but I kind of had this moment this week where it hit me like, okay, if I actually threw everything I had at it and really reined in my spending, I could actually be out of debt in a year. And that just was so encouraging and uh, motivating for me. And so I actually uh, took a couple days and really kind of worked out my budget and my expenses and things like that. And um, I, I really feel strongly that like, that's what I need to do. Like, I just need to get done with this, this student loans, just not have them hanging over my head anymore. But <laughs> the downside to that is it does mean that most of my fun money is gone. So yarn money, not much of it. And um, that's okay. I am going to be sad to not buy as much yarn because I really enjoy buying it. I really enjoy supporting um, other dyers and yarn man makers. Um, I, I don't feel bad about doing that at all. Um, and so I, I am going to be sad not to do that anymore and not to have the new stuff every, every week. But I'm actually kind of excited about getting to use some of this beautiful stash I have behind me. Because one of the things I've found in the last couple of years as I continue to buy more and more and more yarn is I'll buy yarn for a particular project, but I never get around to knitting it because I've already bought more yarn for another project. And so I have several things that I really want to do but because I keep buying more yarn, I'm not doing it. And so my goal for this year with buying less yarn is to really kind of start to knock out some of these projects that I really want to do. So I want to knit like a sea glass sweater from Woolen Pine. I think it's Woolen Pine. Um, now I want to say Woolen Folk. Um, I think that sweater is gorgeous, but it is going to take a long time. And so that's why it hasn't happened. I have tons of minis. I have tons of materials to make that sweater. I just haven't done it. And so um, that's one of the things I'd like to do this year is knit that sweater. Um, I'd like to finish some of the blankets I've started. Um, <clears throat> that'll kind of help clear out some of the old FO or not FOs, old whips that I've got. Um, I have plans for several of like several sweaters and this, this yarn and this stuff. And um, just haven't gotten to it. So, so don't, ex if you really, really enjoy the, the uh, acquisitions, sorry, <laughs> you're not going to see as much of it going forward. I, I am still going to buy yarn. I'm not banning myself from buying yarn. It's just going to be a lot less. Um, but I'm hoping to still make some really beautiful stuff with what I've got. I do. I bought more yarn before I made this decision <laughs> and it hasn't gotten here yet. So there will still be a lag where I'm still getting some new stuff for a while, um, but the purchasing of new stuff has slowed down uh, or stopped. Um, I think I have like one more purchase that I'm planning to make and then we're going to kind of put a pause on it. Um, but the goal is that at the end of the 12 months to be out of debt and now have lots of fun money to buy yarn. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to hate it, but I'm going to do it. Um, oh, I had another thought and I just lost it. Dang it. Oh, I've already told my family that, um, they're not getting any big elaborate Christmas presents this year. They're all going to get knitted garments for Christmas. I'm actually kind of toying with the idea of knitting sweaters for all my family for Christmas. Um, 
that may be a little tricky without buying more yarn because uh yeah i may not have exactly the right yarn to make the sweater i want to make them but maybe i can make it work um they're at least going to get like hats and socks for christmas um but we'll see if they even want sweaters if they don't want sweaters they're not getting one but if they want a sweater i might make them all sweaters for christmas which means i need to get working on that or planning it for too long <laughs> um but yeah so we're gonna knit through what we have we meaning i i'm gonna knit through what i have and just try to enjoy this beautiful stash that i have um and not buy as much so that in the future i can continue to buy more um i do still want to go to the flock fiber festival i think that's what it's called flock fiber festival and it's in august um i figure what i'll do is i will see where i am if i'm ahead of schedule i'm paying off my loans by that point then i'll go if i'm behind schedule i won't um i can't go to rhinebeck this year i think i've already said that um my my annual work trip actually falls exactly the same week so i can't do that but that's okay I can save it for 2024 it'll be great um but yeah so that's that's kind of an update um i'm also telling you guys for accountability <laughs> so if i come on here in a couple months and i have bought tons and tons of yarn uh please feel free to call me out and and ask me how my budgeting is going how my student loan payoff is going um so uh you can keep me honest <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully done with done with uh student loans by this time next year but um i have a lot of knitting to do in that time so i hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead um i hope you get some knitting time i hope you get some good winter weather or if you're in the southern hemisphere you get some good summer weather and i will see you guys back in well you'll i'll see you back in a week for the sweater recap and then for a regular podcast, I'll see you guys back in two weeks. See ya.